Hi, today is November 4th, 2023, and here are my poems for the day. The first one is poem number 1766 for the year, Kronos. Time has treated the quartet well, and they looked fantastic, and they sounded sublime, and it is such a privilege to live in this time and place where one could walk from 76 to Carnegie Hall and let the excitement build, and to sit next to someone who had never seen them and to feel as though the two of you are traveling through a world of music, to experience the somewhat familiar and the mostly new, and to be part of an audience already full of love for Kronos, and to feel a love of Kronos, fill you up along with everyone else, to be the one experiencing, and to be part of the two experiencing, and to be part of the audience experiencing, and to be part of the experience of musicians sending out their experience, and their love, and their knowledge, and their hope, and encouragement, and beauty, and truth, otherworldly, yet somehow of this world. Thank you so much, Kronos, and happy 50th to you. Poem number 1767, still in concert. Sound moving through moments, taking its time, penetrating hearts. Music bursting out of speakers, bouncing off walls, beating on eardrums, entering brains, blowing minds. Explosions, soft and powerful, reverberating still in the stillness of next morning. After the concert, yet still at the concert, and still in concert, still in concert. Poem number 1768, Song. It did kill her softly when she heard his song, but it also knocked her over the head and knocked her out and dragged her up flights of stairs up to the roof and then threw her off. And she flew for thousands of miles, searching for anything that would make her feel what he made her feel, because nothing felt real after she heard his song. I'm going to change it to millions of miles. Poem number 1769, Confluence. He loved the Goldberg variations as played by Glenn Gould, both the 1981 version and Gould's 1955 debut. And he also loved original dark Goldenberg peanut chews. He had never listened to Gould while eating peanut chews, but there was still time for him to one day experience that confluence. Poem number 1770, Consilience. A tree of knowledge where each branch reaches toward reality in concert and or at odds with other branches. Or a series of concentric rings, atomic physics within chemistry, within biology, Psycho psychological states, the study of which relies on what emerges when neurons and synapses interact the behavior and psychology of clumps of myriad individuals underlying the study of economics, anthro anthropology, sociology. E.O. Wilson, who used the word consilience in a title of a book that I, that I only sort of understood when I read it, believed that sciences, the humanities, and the arts operate in consilience and are all part of the same tree that gives meaning and purpose to what we know and what we think we know, or at least that's what I think he meant. I probably could use a bit more consilience within myself myself in order to determine how I feel about the whole thing. Poem number 1771, Clumps. The people waited in clumps for the all clear following the fire drill. When they got the okay, the clumps poured into the building so they could early vote. I was waiting too, and I was six or second, seven seconds late getting the signal and going into the building. I wanted to be ahead of all the slow-moving clumps, but by the time I headed in, one of the clumps was in my way. I was able to work my way around and saunter down the hallway, way ahead of all the clumps, and I was first in line. But after I voted, I had to recognize that for a short time, I was actually a part of one of the clumps. And the last poem of the day, poem number 1772, each other. They did things for each other, to each other, because of each other each thinking of the other, with each other or without each other, but always with each other. All right. Thank you. I appreciate you.